First and foremost, it is important to determine what part of the country would be targeted. Whoever it would be attacking the United States, their goals would likely entail going for the heart of the United States by taking out the White House in Washington DC, dismantling as much of the United States Army and their nuclear weapons as possible, or most horrifically, targeting areas with the highest population. If based on population alone, it would likely be one of the three largest cities that would be hit. New York City at over 8 billion people, Los Angeles at nearly 3.8, or Chicago at nearly 2.7. The Department of Homeland Security has anticipated that the most likely nuclear threat would consist of a smaller nuclear bomb. A 15 kiloton nuclear bomb hits a major U.S. city. The initial target is immediately destroyed by heat of up to 540,000 degrees Fahrenheit. An enormous fireball emerges hundreds of feet into the air as the initial impact kills over 5,000 people, more than 9-11 in a split second. The immediate shockwaves travel at hurricane speeds, taking out anything in their path, including infrastructure and killing another 10,000 people. Those who are unfortunate to be looking straight into the light cause so much trauma to their retina that permanent blindness in hundreds, even thousands of people is immediate. Those located around a mile away see the wave coming towards them as another 15,000 people are killed. The scene is horrific as burn victims, dead bodies, and people impaled with objects through their bodies litter the streets. Immediate action is taken to make sure that the president is still alive, should he have been in the general area. There are highly classified plans laid out for the line of succession should the US president and vice president both be killed. A continuity of government plan would be implemented and the highest ranking cabinet official would become the new leader of the United States. This person would immediately be flown by helicopter to a radiation safe house far away from the blast zone many of which are located inside mountainsides, shielded by rock. Once on location, the president would immediately look over government plans on how to proceed accordingly. The first response would be to secure the United States from a potential second attack. Airspace, like during 9-11, would be immediately cleared up, meaning all commercial flights would land and the skies would be clear in case of any incoming strikes. All other forms of incoming cargo would also be stopped, attempting to completely seal off the country. The first thought is to assume that if there was one bomb, there may be a second. Despite being told to enter a shelter in place, thousands of people begin to panic trying to flee the city at once. However, many highways are destroyed and drivers who were looking into the light are blinded, causing chaos as traffic jams of extreme magnitude begin to clog the roads. With the threat of a second bomb looming, mass evacuations are ordered immediately. The Department of Homeland Security would then deploy teams on ground and in air to strategically search for a potential second bomb. The city hit is broken up into three zones. A half mile radius around the bomb, the severe damage zone is completely obliterated with little to no chance of survival. The next half mile radius of the moderate damage zone sees few people surviving with extensive damage to infrastructure, fires, and serious injuries to people, many of which will likely die within just hours. Finally, the light damage zone would be a three mile radius around the bomb, which sees slight damage to buildings and minor injuries to people. However, this is just the beginning. The worst of this nuclear attack is yet to come.
20 minutes have gone by and the mushroom cloud reaches its peak at a height of nearly 15,000 feet in the air, now beginning to slowly rain highly radioactive debris as far as up to 20 miles away. In an attempt to avoid panicking civilians from going towards a danger area where the debris will fall, government laboratories track the cloud extensively, attempting to pinpoint where it will fall in the hope that they can steer people away from that general area. Television, police, radio, and social media are all used to try and alert people on which direction to go. Remember those traffic jams? Depending on which way the cloud falls, it could mean thousands of people are now stuck on highways with nowhere to go as this radioactive cloud falls, slowly surrounding them all. It is now the next day. Medical staff have worked tirelessly through the night, with thousands of additional medical staff being flown in from around the United States to help with remaining survivors. By now, anywhere from 150 to 250,000 people have died. Nearly half a million are wounded. Responders are put into extremely dangerous environments, and many will face severe levels of radiation. With the scale of casualties, the immense amount of resources even needed to treat everyone is nearly impossible to keep up with. Along with medical staff, search and extraction teams scavenge the hot zones attempting to find anyone still alive. Victims are separated using tags. Black tags are put on victims who are likely to die, meaning no amount of help will save them. Red tags are given to those needing immediate surgery, yellow for delayed treatment, and green are given to those with minimal injuries. Due to such a large number of injured people, victims are flown to nearby cities for treatment. Most casualties will be in the coming days from those exposed to high levels of radiation. The scariest thing about radiation is that you cannot see it, smell it, or taste it. Thus, you cannot know if you're being exposed to deathly amounts of it. Dealing with the incredible number of corpses becomes a problematic situation and mass morgues are built as a result. If it happens to have been a terrorist organization, they are likely to have taken responsibility by now. If demands are not made, they are likely to threaten the American people with another attack. As the rest of the world learns of the events, countries are put on high alert fearing that the United States may attack them, thinking that they were responsible. American retaliation is a must to cease any chance of a future attack. If it was another country's missile, they would know who did it and there would likely be an international response against this country. The more likely cause, however, is a terrorist organization, and the United States needs to determine how they got their hands on the material and if another country helped them. To prevent a potential war, the response from the United States Army needs to be accurate as they could make a deathly mistake and retaliate against the wrong country, causing a tremendous disaster. In coming years, more will die as a result of being exposed to such high amounts of radiation. The US economy will be devastated. The land where the bomb hit would be left uninhabitable for decades. The potential millions of civilians that would need to be resettled would have an extreme burden on the rest of America and surrounding cities to help them. America and the world would be forever changed.